Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to continue our look at quadratic applications, and this will be on quadratic area applications. So for my pre-calculus students, this would be lesson four in our look at quadratics. So uh, another great example or application where we can apply quadratics is using area because you often end up with a squared term because to find area, you're multiplying two sides and when you do that you can end up with a squared term as you will see so quadratics are um, appropriate all right so let's take a look at this problem situation quickly here uh, example a rectangular cotton field is to be enclosed by a fence alongside a river the river serves as one side of the field while the fence serves as the boundaries of the other three sides the farmer has a total of only a thousand meters of fence available okay so let's think about this all right so if we have a river here that's going to serve as one side of this field we could fence this in and it could look like that for example this could be the fenced in area of uh, that we use a thousand meters uh, to use that's one way it could look we could also um, do something like this where we fence in using a thousand meters of fence and have a shape like that or more of a kind of a square looking shape like this so we really don't know what we're how it's going to work out but down here you will see we want to maximize the area so we need to uh, figure out what we need to do to in order to use a thousand meters of fence with the constraints that we have here and maximize this area so let's just go with uh, more of the square look so if we have our river right here and we uh, put our fence up here and so we'll call this width, width, and this can be length here. All right. Normally, when we would make this, we would have two lengths and two widths, but we have the river here as a border, so this problem uh, has a little bit of a different look to it because we have two widths but only one length in this case. All right. So that part's done. Now, part B. Write an equation in which all three sides are summed and set equal to 1,000, and then solve for the L variable. So in order to maximize this we would go through this same process to maximize all of this area in here you know that's our going to be our end goal here uh, so this is just kind of structuring it and and marching us towards that but but you would follow these same steps uh, in order to maximize the area in any problem situation alright so we want to write an equation in which all three sides are summed okay so that's going to be W this one plus the other W this side plus L this side and that's got to be equal to 1000 because that's our constraint the farmer only has a thousand meters of fence so let's simplify this combine these like terms so 2W plus L equals 1000 and lastly it asks us to solve for the L variable so we get L by itself we'll subtract 2W so we get L equals 1000 minus 2W all right we're solving for L in terms of W. You will see why in this part right here. So it says, part C, substitute from the equation in part B. So this right here, substitute into the equation for the area of the field so as to produce area as a function of the width. So normally area is width times length, right? Or length times width, however you want to look at it. But we want to set it up in terms of only one variable so we can work with it. So we're going to substitute this chunk right here in for our L right here. So area width times length is now equivalent to width times this whole chunk for L. Okay, so we're substituting all of this in for this L here. So 1000 minus 2w and now we just have area in terms of one variable so we can work with it now one last step let's distribute this w in here and here and we will get 1000w minus 2w squared and now we have a quadratic we have a squared term right so um, one last step to make this look like a more like a standard form parabola that you're used to with the right order with our squared term first we're going to rewrite this just rearrange it to be negative 2w squared plus 1000w 
All right, part D says, use a graphing calculator to graph the area of the field as a function of the width of the field. So really what they're asking us to do, uh, you know, we're used to using our f of x notation. Okay, well, we're going to use that same notation here, and we're going to do area in terms of width. So um, when we do that, when we set it up this way, uh, the area is now... The area is now our y-axis, and the width is our x-axis when we graph this thing later. Okay, so a sub w, not a sub w, a of w, a of w, is equal to this thing right here, negative 2w squared plus 1,000w. Okay, when I write it this way, now remember our standard form of a parabola was ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so our a value, our a value is negative 2, our b value is 1000, and our c value is not there, so it's 0, right? Our c value is 0. Remember, our c value gives us our y-intercept, so this thing will intercept at 0, y equals 0. So when x is 0, in this case we're using w, so when our w is 0, our y uh, is 0, so we have 0 comma 0 on the graph. All right. Now the reason that, that I'm doing this, uh, to make a long story short, is to help us set up our graphing window. Because we, if we just put this in our calculator and we mess around and we try to get the graph to fit, it's going to take a while with guess and check. But we can utilize this method to help shorten the process. So we're going to use the fact that the x-coordinate of our vertex is equal to negative b over 2a when it's in standard form like this. So for us, our b value is 1,000, so negative 1,000 over 2 times our a value. Our a value is negative 2, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 1,000 divided by negative 4 is positive 250. So we now have, through using what we already know about quadratics, we have identified the x-coordinate of our vertex. So our vertex is at 250 comma something, right? So we know we have a y-coordinate uh, we, an x-coordinate of our vertex of 250. The reason we're doing this is to help us set our window. If you know your vertex, that goes a long way in setting up your window because our vertex, in this case, we have a quadratic that is opening downward like this. So if we find this vertex up here, this maximum point, that'll help us set our window because we can box this thing in in our calculator so that it'll fit. That's the whole goal, right? All right, so let's use our calculator uh, to help us find the y-coordinate of our vertex now that we know the x-coordinate. All right, so I have our function in here, our area function, negative 2w squared plus 1,000w. I've got that in here for us. And we know that the x-coordinate of our vertex is 250, so let's let our calculator uh, figure out what the y-coordinate would be. So uh, we already have this in y1, so we just go to second table set. And we want to jump to an x value of 250 and see what the y value is. So let's use our table. So second window lets us jump right to 250 in our table. So now go in our table, second graph. And we see we have a vertex now of 250 comma 125,000. The x coordinate of our vertex is 250, which we found from negative b over 2a. And our calculator just told us what the y coordinate of our vertex is, positive 125,000. So our vertex is 250 comma 125,000. All right, so now we can set up our window pretty easily. Realize when we find our vertex, we're finding the middle of our parabola. We already established that 0, 0 is in there, so one of the, the leftmost root of our graph is at 0, 0. So the right root is going to be, uh, if the middle of it's at 250, the right root is at 500 right so if we we're not concerned about any negative x value so we're just going to put in like a negative 2 just so we can see the y-axis in our graph picture we determine our vertex is at an x coordinate of 250 the left root is at uh, 0 so the right root is twice this value so the right root would be at 500 so let's make our x max a little past that 510 our y minimum um, 
why the y-axis remember is our area we're not concerned about any negative areas that's impossible actually so we're going to put just a little below the x-axis here so let's just put negative 2 in y maximum well we already found that the y coordinate of our vertex was 125 thousandths we need to be a little bit above that so we can see the full parabola so let's just make it 127 thousand Okay, you could guess and check and finally get this window figured out and, and graph it in your calculator, but use, finding the vertex first will help you. Now, it's taken me a while to explain this, but once you get it down, it'll go pretty quick. All right, so let's graph this thing now, and we should have the full parabola in there. Okay, there we go. So we've got that. So let's, it asks us to graph that. So let's bring that over here. All right, so... Let's follow the normal procedure that we use and let's find our vertex here. It hasn't asked us to do that yet, but it's going to in a minute. So let's go ahead and get our vertex. Now that we have it graphed and it's uh, perfect here uh, in our window, uh, we can do that with second trace and maximum because the vertex of a downward opening parabola is the maximum point. So. We'll hit four here. We'll go to left bound. We'll just get a little bit left of the vertex there. Right bound, the calculator asks us for. Just arrow a little bit to the right. Hit enter for guess. Hit enter. And uh, there we have it at 250, 125,000. Your calculator can have a little rounding error. This is four way out here. So 250, 125,000, right? So we, we actually already found that earlier, but our calculator just confirms that for us. So vertex is 250, 125,000. That just confirms all the work we did earlier. All right. And let's label this. Our y-axis, remember, is area. So let's put that area. And that would be in meters squared, square meters. And our x-axis here is our width. And that was in meters. So I'm going to put parentheses M for meters. All right, so that part's done. Now let's finish this problem up with the last two parts. All right, so the last thing it asks us for is what is the maximum area? Well, remember area is our y-axis, so the maximum area occurs up here at the maximum point of this function. The maximum value of the function, the maximum y value is 125,000. So the maximum area that we could make in this problem situation is 125,000 square meters. So that's the answer to that. And the last part here, what should be the dimensions of the field? So area is a maximum. All right, well, we know the maximum width is going to be, remember our x coordinate is our width here. So the max, uh, to maximize the area, our width would need to be 250. So width equals 250. And now that we know what our width has to be, we can find our length. Remember this equation up here. We determine that the length in this situation is equal to 1,000 minus 2 times the width. So if the width is 250, we just substitute in a 250 for this W. So length is equal to 1,000 minus 2 times our width, which is 250. So that's 1,000 minus 2 times 250 is 500. 1,000 minus 500 is 500. Okay, so now we have finished the problem. So the width has to be 250 and the length has to be 500. So looking back here at our original picture, we would need a width equal to 250 here and a length equal to 500 in order to maximize this area and make that maximum area be 125,000 125, square meters. All right, so that problem's done. Great application of a quadratic function. And that's a wrap for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.